morning. I want to welcome you to the Petroleum Club and the Morning Star Prayer Breakfast. Our first breakfast downtown Fort Worth. We're excited. The ladies and the gentlemen already sitting at the table. And the breakfast has begun. So we praise the Lord today for prayer downtown at the Petroleum Club. Power of prayer. Of the priority of prayer. And so we're here. You have names on each of your tables that will tell you at the end what we're going to be praying for. And we want you, someone at that table, to do that. And we're hoping that this delicious, nutritious breakfast, uh, at the beginning of the day, will give you vim, vigor, and vitality to go out into this day and show God's love to whoever crosses your path. God created love so that we can give it away. So give love to someone today, and happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Belinda's going to come up and bless the food, and after she does, we're going to get in line and get your breakfast. Thank you for coming. so I wouldn't leave out any important parts. Um, Lord God, we praise you. We want to lift you up and honor you this day with our prayers. So many people have been praying for Fort Worth to be a city of worth. The Trinity River is a significant part of what is to take place here. It has four tributaries, leading north, south, east and west. May this symbolize people coming from all directions to honor you. Lord, we mark this day, February 12, 2016, as a start for new beginnings here in our city. We claim this territory for you. Bless those who have um, come here today to pray. May the fire of the Holy Spirit ignite. Holy Spirit, Fill this room and building. May we see revival in Fort Worth, Texas. Lord God, thank you for the people who have prepared this meal and for those who have come to honor you today. We thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, so that we might be able to go and start getting our breakfast. With these first three tables, go get in line and get your breakfast, please. One, two, three. My name is uh, Robert Ellison, and I'm fortunate to be uh, the husband of Ellen Ellison. I'm the uh, lesser, lesser part, maybe the lesser half. Uh, I just want to say uh, good morning to you all here as I attend to Miss Breakfast, where women are going to teach me how to pray. But I just want you to know uh, God is an awesome God. Uh, I know for a fact he is, he is because in my life, he has he is turned my life all around. And I think uh, it's all started one day traveling down Highway 287. When I really came to grips with who God is, uh, I was traveling maybe, maybe 60 or 65 miles an hour, and a person just pulled across the freeway in front of me. I had no time to get my brakes. Uh, all, all, I just all that all they had time to say, Jesus. And that's all it took. God sent an angel. Saved my life, saved her life, and turned her car into a C shape. Turned my truck just flat in the front of me, back. I couldn't want to get out of the door. I was so quick. All of the airbags and all the way So, I would say it started in my life on that day, realizing God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is all powerful. He is to be worshipped. He is to be praised. Hallelujah to His name. I, I love the Lord. I love the Lord with all my heart and all my soul. Sometime in life, we have to go through things to understand. 
understand who God is. God allows us to go through this. I apologize that I, I'm remorseful, but when I think of the goodness of God, it just, it just overwhelms me. But I love God. And I just, just want to say that I would encourage each of you to trust God. Trust Him. Because he never fails. He never fails. He's true to his word. He's faithful. And Brother Cedric, I just thank you for allowing me this opportunity to say what I did say to give this testimony. God is a good God. Praise him.
Thank you so much, Roseanne, for blessing our heart. Well, before our guest, Belgrads, comes up, I, I would just like to share with you briefly how this came about. I've known Elda Epps for, well, I've been in the industry for 30 years, and she's probably been with real estate for that long, so we knew each other, sing each other at banquets and whatever, but never really connected. And, and I, I, I laugh because sometimes I used to say those because then she was a church of God in Christ and I was a bad That's all right. <laughs> but now we're on the same page. But let me tell you how I became a part of the prayer center. I celebrated an anniversary yesterday, the 11th of February. It was last year, February 11th, that she called. You know, she wears a lot of hats. And she was helping the lady get all of her business in order, and she wanted to look at her portfolio. So she asked me if I could come and meet with them. Well, I did the printouts, and I went back yesterday to make sure in the file at the bottom it says February 11, 2015. So I've been a part of the prayer center for a year. But if I tell you, it has been an awesome year. An awesome year. There was a real tremendous stronghold that that, that was there, and if I tell you, just by being in the atmosphere of prayer twice a week, has totally, totally changed. So you need to hear what she has to say, because she will truly, truly be blessed. Because everybody sitting here, whether you admit it or not, is dealing with something. So now may I please present to you Elder Helen Collins. Of the Lord. Oh, how wonderful it is when the people of 
of the Lord, when the daughters of Zion, when the sons, hallelujah, when we come together with one mind to just worship Him, to glorify Him. We praise the Lord today for each of you. And we're so excited to have you be a part of this gathering. It's really a prayer gathering. I don't have a written, uh, I didn't prepare a sermon. I don't have a written script. Candace and I went to bed. I kind of went to sleep on her last night. And I just, I got the word. I began to read. And Brother Epps came to bed and he said, you're going to go to sleep. I may as well just move your Bible. And sure enough, I did. I just laid down and went to sleep. And I said, Father, whatever your will is today, whatever your will is today, that's what we want to do. Because Holy Spirit, you're the guest of all. Yes, yes, yes. So we want you, hallelujah. We want you to move, hallelujah. We want you to do what you do best. And that's to rain your glory down on your people. So we're excited about each of you today. We're just, all of you are our guests. The program says that all of you are our guests today. But we have a young lady that flew all the way from Auburn, Washington. Um, last night, just to be here in this prayer breakfast, will you help me welcome Miss Candace Challenge all the way from Washington? We've been connected by prayer. We were coming back from Washington, Tacoma in October, and she had this beautiful bag. We were at the airport, she had this beautiful bag, and it got my attention. And you know, for those of you that know Brother Epps, you know, he's just going to do what he's going to do. And he just walked over to her and started talking about the person. I got embarrassed, you know, because I didn't know what he was going to say. And we started a conversation, and uh, she asked us what we did, and we told her, and then we walked outside to get our um, uh, waiting on the, the bus to come and pick us up, and she came back and said, "What are you What are you cooking for, the, for dinner on Sunday?" And I said, "Collard greens and fried chicken." I only seen the lady one time at the airport. She said, "I'm coming to your house for dinner on Sunday." <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, she came in. She and her sister-in-law for the Seahawks game, football game. And so we exchanged numbers. And she said, "I don't normally do this. I don't normally meet people." And just begin to conversationalize with them and get attached to them. So I gave her my number reluctantly because I was saying, oh God, I don't know this woman. <laughs> and I told her the other day because she's kind of loud like me. And so I said, she's a new loud Lord. <laughs> and he said, you are too. <laughs> and so, you know, I was preparing, didn't hear from her on Sunday. And I was preparing on Monday to fly into Kansas City for an all-night prayer service uh, with one of my mothers in Zion, who is the intercessory, international intercessory leader for the Churches of God in Christ. And so I uh, didn't hear from her on Sunday, but that Monday she called and said, I got some time. I want to come over to your house. I said, well, honey, I'm getting ready to go out of town. But we talked, and we began to talk. And we talked over a period of time, and she was having surgery. And we, I called and prayed for her. I'd only met her one time. And we began to pray over a period of months. And for Christmas, she sent, uh, I began to share with her what we do at the prayer center. So she sent seven boxes for our mothers, those beautiful fleece, uh, uh, you know, um, cakes that you receive. They came from Candace. And she sent the boxes and candy for the children. And then um, the Lord spoke to me. She said she was having surgery. I'm going somewhere. Don't get, don't get nervous. I'm going somewhere. Uh, she said she was having surgery. Candace has had 10 surgeries. 10 surgeries. Over just, what, a two-year period? Two-year period. But she looks so gorgeous today. She said, I'm going to have another surgery on January the 4th, I believe. And when she said it to me, the Lord said to me then, he said, you're going to go to uh, Washington and be with her in the surgery. And normally when I get these, you know, when the Lord speaks, normally Brother Elf said, I don't know if that's the Lord or not. <laughs> but this time he said, I believe you are to go. And so I knew that was God. We always say when Brother Elf said it, you know it's God. Because normally he says, my wife, I just don't know about my wife. I get up every morning wondering what in the world she's going to get us into today. <laughs> so I got on a plane on a Sunday afternoon, Sunday morning, flew, flew to uh, Auburn, met her at the hospital. We prayed for her, and uh, 
She's here today. Amen. We've met three times. because I believe in the power of the prayer. Amen. You don't know, you may be entertaining an angel on the way. So we've got to treat people with love yeah. and kindness. In this room, there's so many stories. Our theme today is what happens when the people of the Lord get together and pray. And so when I asked the Lord this morning, I said, God, what am I to say? You know, what am I to say? You didn't give me a prepared script, what am I to say? And I'm really an awesome speaker. <laughs> <laughs> but the Spirit of the Lord said, how about the ladies help you? How about, and then he began to share with me what I was to do. So because this room is filled, and we thank God for Pastor Taylor in the room, for Brother Johnny Bacon, yeah. Brother Johnny Taylor, Brother Robert Epps, and all the other men, we appreciate you today. We could not do, we thank God for Brother Tim sitting over in the corner. Come on, Tim, raise your hand. Let's see. This is Christy's good-looking husband. We praise the Lord for all of the men of God because they are the priests of our houses. And they lead us into this place. I often say I could not do what I do if Brother Epps did not allow me to do it. So I honor my priest today. I bow before my priest today in humble submission. Honey, why are you talking? Will you just stay? <laughs> And I thank God that after Brother John went to be with the Lord and Sister Linda, his wife, went to be with the Lord, I thank God that 10 years ago, going on 11 years, he brought him into my life. And certainly he brought this diamond into his life. <laughs> I praise the Lord for him because truly he's been a blessing. Uh, he was a, we laugh and we joke about this, and you didn't catch it when Louise said it a few minutes ago, but he comes from a very traditional Baptist background. I come from a wild Pentecostal background. <laughs> My husband didn't even know what a woman preacher looked like. He did not like Paula White. He loved Joss Myers. And certainly I'm a cross between them and a whole lot of other folks. And so I don't even think he believed women could preach when we got married. But you know, the Lord has done a wonderful thing. But what I do, praise the Lord, it is because certainly the Lord allows, but my husband is just a wonderful blessing to me. Even when he disagrees, he says, well, let me, let me just pray that it is the Lord, <laughs> that it's not you. <laughs> so I praise God for him today. And we thank God for every spouse that's represented in this house. Because my husband says, when you speak, you represent me. That's right. So when you stand before the people of the Lord, make sure you have your act together. Make sure you have consulted the Holy Spirit. Because whatever you do, you represent me. So every wife in this house, we represent our spouses. Because they are our priests. Amen? They're our priests. Those of you that are not married, you have a Boaz on the way. So in the process, you trust God and change so we thank God today, what happens when a room like this is filled with praying people? There is synergy in the room. There is excitement in the room. And we don't quite know what the Holy Spirit is going to do. But one thing I'm assured of is that we know the Holy Spirit is reigning. And he's going to reign even greater in our lives. Because we have come together with one mind, on one accord. Not asking them for houses and cars and a whole bunch of other stuff. But we have come this morning to say, Holy Spirit, fill our cups today. Because all of us have some empty places. All of us deal with some loneliness, whether we're married, whether we're single, widow, widow, whatever the case may be. We may be black, we may be white, we may be Hispanic, we may be Asian, we may be a whole lot of other stuff. When you look through my background, I got so many different mixtures in my background, sometimes I wonder who I am. But here's what I'm assured of, is that I'm a daughter of God. I'm a But how about when I came into the kingdom, praise the Lord.
born rich enough. I wasn't born poor enough. I don't have this. I don't have that. Listen, we have no excuses. Because he said, come unto me. Oh, you can labor and a heavy lady. And he said, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me for my yoke is easy. And my burdens are light. And I just want to tell you this morning that if you take it to the cross, praise the Lord. And he said, yes, in your spirit. Yes, and your will, hallelujah, every chain will fall off. I didn't read that in a book. I didn't read that in a book. Hallelujah. Been there, done that, ate that cabbage, ate that broccoli, whatever it was, praise the Lord. I know exactly what it tastes like. I know what pain is. I know what embarrassment is. I know what great humiliation is. I've been lower than lower. Praise the Lord. But you know what? I praise God that no matter how low I went, praise the Lord, God reached down and peace me. So, Rosanna, you had an awesome, Rosanna, you had an awesome testimony. If if we all had the microphone, we've all got some embarrassing moments in our lives. Praise the Lord. He said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So don't play. We may look good today on the outside, but we've all got some bruises in our lives. Every last one of us, we've got some bruises in our lives. I said a minute ago, we joke about the Baptists and Pentecostal, and we say that lovingly. We say that lovingly. When we get to heaven, nobody's going to care about you. I'm going to be so glad to see my daddy. I'm not going to give a prayer about it. Hello, somebody. I'm just going to say more of you, more of you. I just want to praise you. I just want to love on you. I just want to glorify you. I just want to be in your presence. Praise the Lord. How awesome it is. So what happens when we pray? What happens when we come together? What happens when we forget about the side of town we grew up on? Whether it was uptown, downtown, projects, ghetto. What happens when we forget about the color of our skin? What happens when we forget about our actual worship? And when you worship, how can you complain? How can you fuss? How can you be angry when you're so full of his love and his peace and his spirit? So that's what happens when I when we pray. Amen. A young woman, Amen. newly divorced, with four young children, a master's degree, been married 15, 16, 17 years, how many years? Uh, it was 12 years, but we were together for 18 years. Young woman, young woman, young woman. Amen. Prayer works. Yes. 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 What the situation is, no matter what your circumstances are, we are knitted together through the kingdom of God. A mature woman, warrior. So my mom um, prays. As a little girl trying to sleep, I would hear her in whatever room praying loud, real loud, and real long. And as I got older, she would get me out of bed and have me on my knees by her because at that moment she needed just a sincere agreement. Prayer, oh my God, not only opens up the doors of communication with our Heavenly Father, but it leads and guides and controls our steps. Um, I would like to say that you know, it's no surprise that our prayer lives are always attacked. I struggle like everybody else. To you, you want to have it maintained. You want to stay on that high like we hear your sister Helen. But the enemy is going to attack prayer all the time. Uh, if you have prayer meetings at your church, it's attacked. If you are a person of prayer, you go to sleep, you get distracted, it's attacked. It's on purpose. But I, I heard what you said as well. God wants us to be concerned about others in our prayer, and he's going to take care of us. I can't even begin to tell you all the different stories in my life, not being born with a silver spoon either. I remember mom praying for my application just in law school, and she said, I saw it rise to the top. So there's a favor that comes when you exercise prayer. So, oh, my God. Women of prayer, I'm excited just to know that the Holy Spirit is in this room and that we're on one accord. Look out for her. Woo! I just thank God for her because she's such a blessing, such a jewel. And she honest. Woo! I, 
God, I'm gonna be nice. I'm gonna be nice. <laughs> I love praising the God. And this, is, this ain't just started. This is my life. Yeah. This is my life. I'm going to tell you when people come up on the church, God, he's that's what the maker. Because I was going to give him everything I have. Hallelujah. Old lady told me when she said, honey, will you come here? Come looking for something for yourself. That's just what I did. I ain't looking around thinking about what you're doing, what you're going to do. Oh, Come to lift up the name of Jesus. But he said, if he be lifted up, he's going to grow me and I just thank God for them for having this prayer. And I can be a part of it. I love you and I thank you so much. Mother, so walk around the room and hand over the body. What a blessing. Thank you, Lord. What a blessing this breakfast has been. What happens when women pray? We've had an awesome, awesome experience this morning with the Holy Spirit. We did this prayer breakfast um, because Elder Epps had the vision on December 10 that we should have a prayer breakfast for women across the city. We have 119 persons present today praising God. It has been such a glorious experience. We're so glad that you were able to experience it with us. Thank you, Elder Epps, for your vision. Thank you, Elder Epps, for your prayers, and thank you, Elder Epps, for your concern and love. God bless.